guys welcome back um i thought you might like to see my skin this is literally probably a week since you've seen my skin in the previous videos where it was really inflamed pustule sore it was all down here cheeks are a little bit red i've just put some moisturizer on um hormones i know i keep saying it but it is definitely hormones um because as soon as my period started, my skin cleared completely. Well, completely. I have been using Surlantra, which works on the pustules and the spots. And then I've also been using the Rosex, which works on the redness. But it's just crazy, isn't it? I mean, I spent about four days looking horrific. I felt like I looked horrific. It just really bothered me last time. And then now, with to this, it just doesn't really make any sense. Um, but I've been adding an awful lot of moisture to my skin. Um, still using the Vichy Aqualia Thermal Serum, but I've also got the Vichy 89 Mineral Serum, which made a huge, huge difference because my skin was flaking. And the Aqualia Thermal Serum was stinging a little bit. It does have salicylic acid as an ingredient, not particularly high up um, in the ingredients list but it is there and i do have um, an aspirin allergy so i am conscious of that even though i use aquilea thermal serum a lot so i got the mineral 89 and that's been a big improvement also um although i've still been whacking the elf on i found the vichy aquilea volcano drop moisturizer really really um i love this i just love the applicator look at this like icing a cake lovely um i just found this really gentle but my goodness does it hydrate probably more so um than the elf it's so gentle i mean my skin my skin reddens as soon as i touch it anyway and you'll often get that with sensitized skin but it's such a beautiful moisturizer um and it's made a huge difference to the dried areas. It's funny really because as soon as um, the rosacea started to go, my skin just sort of pinged back to normal. It's absolutely bonkers. But I really, really have fallen for this, this moisturiser. So I just wanted to share that with you so you could see the improvement in my skin and how quickly it changes, which is why it's so frustrating, rosacea, because you are literally sort of constantly trying to guess what's wrong and what trigger. And the only trigger I could see was looking in my diary, and I've been keeping a note on everything, was hormones, period, skin's back to normal. So we'll see what happens moving forward when I'm due a period again and to see if my skin reacts. We'll see. Right, I'm going to put some makeup on. Again, it's the Use Up um, makeup. Not everybody's cup of tea, um, I gather. But I really need to do this. And it just seems an ideal opportunity to film. I guess, you know, a lot of people want to keep seeing new products. I totally understand that. Totally get it. And if that's your thing, you can switch off. It's your choice. Um, but I need to use products up. And I know a lot of you just like to see the makeup anyway. The foundation that I just uh, picked out is the Ghislaine. And it's Paro Gold. One of my favourite foundations. I absolutely love it. It's shade 12. And it's a luminous foundation. They're not... I mean, Ghislaine isn't, you know, a cheap brand um should never use the word cheap it isn't an expensive brand um i mean galen is an expensive brand but some of the products are amazing i am however going to use the becca light shifter dewing tint purely because i just want to use it on my skin now it's not as horrendous as it was and appreciate it in its full dewy glory let me get a mirror oh this is so nice, so, so nice. Oh, I just love it. You could just use it on the cheek areas if you just want a bit of highlight on your cheeks. I just like a complete not a, you know, dewy base for the whole face. Dewy base for the whole face. It feels so nice. 
think I said when I first used it, it reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter and it really does. It really, really does. It's probably got more, I mean, it's all down to shades as well. So Orbit 2, it does have more that sort of silvery sheen where Charlotte Tilbury has more a golden um, hue to it. Um, this is a tad more obvious, a tad, but it still gives a similar effect where you don't get shimmer, you just get glow. And I'm liking the glow. That's it's such a nice product, really nice product. Chewing Tint Orbit 2. There are other shades, just to be clear. Um, I had a question, a really good question, and I wanted to touch on it on here because when I replied I kind of felt I don't know I confused myself but a very very good question Janice lovely Janice I hope you're well Janice wanted me to explain my video description so you know you get the title but then after the title you get ad PR not paid blah 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 and then you'll also get a little pop-up that says paid promotion and she just sort of said you know it says ad, not paid, etc. But then the caption says, includes paid promotion. And she was confused. We're all confused, as I said to Janice. It's very, very confusing. And this is the Advertising Standards Agency legislation. And to be honest, sometimes they say it's advised. Um, and then sometimes they say, no, you know, these are the rules, such as they've just recently brought in that you mustn't use a filter if you're wearing your makeup and flogging your makeup, saying, oh, look at this effect, and it's all filtered out. You're not allowed to do that. But they change it so often, and bloggers get very confused, and a lot of bloggers don't declare anything at all. And you probably watch a lot of them. My premise is that I am as transparent as I can be. So, add doesn't necessarily mean you've been paid but the ASA see it that if you've got a product that's been sent to you so for instance it cosmetics sent me the bye bye under eye they are saying even if they didn't pay me I am still advertising this product that's been sent to me so technically it is kind of a paid promotion that's how YouTube see it. So YouTube see it as if you've had a product sent to you, even if you haven't been paid to advertise it, you are still advertising something. And technically this product is you being paid in product. So that's why the pop-up comes up on YouTube because they class this as paid. If it's, a, if it's a PR item, you're being paid, even if you haven't had money handed in. So that's why you'll see paid if I've got PR in my video. Regarding everything after the title of the video, I'm going to put my foundation on while I bore you with this. Regarding everything um, after the title of the video, ad, basically you're advertising the product, PR because it is PR, not paid because I haven't been paid to advertise it. So confusing. But then I will add paid if I have being paid as well as receiving the product. Then there's also previous PR. So if I've bought an item, but I've had PR from the brand previously, then you have to declare that within, I think, it may be six or 12 months of receiving the PR item. If you buy something, you have to declare that you've had PR previously from that group. Also, you have to declare if they're samples, I declare if it's a gift, I declare if it's a GWP, I basically declare everything and I just put it all after the title because literally everything applies in the video. I will have PR but I may also have stuff I've bought that I did have as PR originally um, such as the Egyptian magic in another video where I, I did my lips. I've had PR of that but I bought that pot and it does become very clinical and very exacting. But that's why there's so much um, after the title of my video. But I hope that explains what I'm doing. I'm just following the rules and being as transparent as possible. And the ASA also say, don't leave it till the bottom. You've got to have it up there so people can see. So you can see, you know, all these things that I am declaring. Um, 
and generally I verbally tell you but that's not enough you've got to have it there so I hope that maybe explains it better Janice than when I replied to your your comment but thank you for asking it it's always good to clarify these things and also you know you, you know feel free to ask bloggers why aren't you declaring you know if they keep waving things in the air saying to you this is PR feel free to say to them but you haven't declared that why haven't you declared it I could list you a lot of bloggers that don't or they'll just do a throwaway comment of um, everything's PR unless otherwise stated that's not acceptable that is not acceptable they must have it at the start on Instagram it must be at the beginning before you start describing your products and a lot don't do it so you know ask the questions and say call people out on it because you have a right to know as a consumer exactly what that person is doing um, and what they're trying to sell you and I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to be transparent what have you got to hide that's such a gorgeous foundation look at that it's the foundation I use if I in the old days you know when you used to socialize but no it's the foundation I use you know if you've got something to go to and you need it to last all day I'm going to use some of my it cosmetics this is medium bye bye under eye concealer I watched it's a sin I spoke about it the lovely Kate I think Kate watched the whole thing didn't you in one go and I did as well I thought right I'm gonna watch it oh my goodness I cried I cried for so many reasons it was amazingly acted oh my goodness me the acting if you've seen it I just adored the whole cast it was so beautifully portrayed and oh and you kind of the awful thing is you kind of know what's coming which made it really heavy on the heart and I remember those times I remember those awful I, I said to you awful adverts and it just it just created such a bigoted horrible environment it also brought out the good in a lot of people but it also brought out a really horrendous side of people um but those terrible adverts I mean and people just didn't know and it was scary and I don't know whether they could have done more or made people more aware or whether they kept it hidden for too long I, I really really don't know but I, I watched it and oh every character I just I just wanted everything to be all right you know and you just could see it coming um, and then the attitude of sort of the parents as well you know where you just hateful hateful parents and then you had the wonderful the wonderful parents who were so supportive and you know just loved their children for who they are as human beings it's all the rest of it if they're happy who cares but unfortunately that's not life and you don't always get people like that I'm afraid um, and sadly I have friends who've you know come out um, and it hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been good for them f family wise, but they're true to themselves. And I really, oh, I did, I, I cried. My eyes were swollen with the, with the tears. Um, I kind of want to watch it again. It's one of those where you, you want to watch it because it was just stunningly acted, but I don't know if I can go through the heartache again. Um, and the music as well I mean that's sort of secondary but the music sort of takes the story along and I remember all those tunes um, but yes if you haven't do watch it it is an education it still teaches you a lot and it kind of made me realize how much I miss because I was quite young youngish at the time and quite naive at that point but you realize how much you miss and how much you're misled by so much and how easily people the fears put into people about things um yeah um but do let me know if you've watched it um i've not come across anybody yet who's who's had a bad word to say about it um it's very very emotional 
Right, I'm going to use the Narcissist um, Wanted palette. And we've been watching Summer of Rockets with Toby Stevens and Keely Hawes and Timothy Spall and Claire Bloom and Peter Firth and Aid Edmondson. It's a Polyakov drama. I do like Polyakov's work. So inevitably it focuses on generally sort of government government things and Russia and spies and you're constantly trying to figure out who the good guys are and who the bad guys are which I love I love all the um, spy stuff um, I always um, found the um, Anthony Blunt story fascinating he was a curator of the Queen's art collection and he was outed as a Russian spy and he kept his job and there was always a lot of interest in that. Alan Bennett did a marvellous play about it. Um, Prunella Scales played the Queen and she was incredible. You think Helen Mirren's good, Prunella Scales was superb. But you don't see it a lot now. I kind of wonder, you know, has, has he been told not to, not to sort of put it on? But it's a fascinating story about, you know, it's like the time that John le Carre, um, he was a, uh, worked as MI6. MI5, MI6, and then he was outed. He was outed by one of the Cambridge spies and named. And of course, if you're named, you can't be in the Secret Service, and that's how he got into writing. But he was he was Cornwall, wasn't he? Cornwell, Cornwall. So yeah, we what we watched that, and it's it's very very good because we were just constantly couldn't decide who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. Um, and it's very clever because the bad guys were dropping things in that were actually quite true about people, you know, close to the the, the Queen who aren't good people. And, you you know, why I was going, yeah, Anthony Blunt, I know that. So you kind of, you misled a lot. And there were so many clues, now we look back, to what was happening and how information drips through. And, you know, it, it's a really, really good summer of rockets. I do recommend... Um, watching it if you like Polyakov and uh, it's sort of the 50s post-war right I'm going to use some of this the shimmer but it's all the sort of fear around nuclear weapons nuclear war that kind of thing um, but we really enjoyed it, it was well acted Keely Hall seems to be in so much at the moment I do like her she's so beautifully presented and she looks so elegant and it was nice to see Claire Bloom as well because you don't see her in much I think she's well into her 80s now but again I mean she was a stunning actress in her time Shakespearean actress and she plays she plays a good part in it right let's just soften that down a little bit so we've done that still on with Snowpiercer by Eck still watching we're nearly at the final in fact we are at the final of the um the food program with the celebrities where i'm a little bit soft in the heart for red balls thing but tom oh i'm completely enchanted by tom tom is a complete delight uh and Craig and I just like he's just the nice you can just tell he's a nice person so yeah we are uh, nearly at the final for that I'm going to use that shimmer in the eye corner a little bit and we watched thanks to my lovely friend Helen who sent me a message saying I'm watching this and we put it on um Pressburger and Powell's A Matter of Life and Death with David Niven and Kim Hunter and uh, if you haven't watched it you really need to watch it it's uh, such a great film such a great film um it's just Powell and Pressburger at their best as ever one of the best Roger Lifts is in it as well. Roger Lifts did quite a lot of Powell and Pressburger films. 
um, but it's David Niven who's a pilot in the war and he's talking to Kim Hunter over his radio and his plane's going to crash and it's his time to die only he doesn't because he kind of falls in love with her over the radio and he has to argue his case whether that be limbo, heaven, wherever but the premise is brilliant um, and time stands still when his sort of angel visits him um, and it's Marius Goring who plays the angel he plays him as a French aristocrat who's had his head locked off in the French Revolution but I would say if you watch it Marius Goring's character I, I really do feel that Joel Grey stole a lot of his um, character in Cabaret from that performance because it is so Cabaret-esque um, but Marius Goring's a marvellous actor anyway, but yeah, he kind of plays Niven's angel who really needs to, you know, he should be in heaven. It was his time to die, but he has to argue why it's not his time to die. And he loves this girl and he wants to stay with her. So, yeah, um, it's it's worth a watch. I'm just going to use a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Barbarella Brown. And what else have I got to tell you? Oh, it's just been a... I don't know. A week where real life has sort of invaded the lives of a couple of friends of mine in an unpleasant way, in a really sad way. And I felt really sad yesterday. It, I just, you know, when you've been through things yourself, you kind of know what people are going through. I know I've said this before to you and it hurts you kind of hurt for them because you know it's horrible and you know there's nothing you can do to stop it um and it kind of reminds you that it, it's always there that potential is always there that something can happen that will take your life down a route that you've got to deal with it even if you don't want to and two of my friends have just had a really sad week well, not a sad week, just sad times, really. Right, let's get some... Oh, we'll do some brow. No, put mascara on. If I leave that primer on my lashes too long, it, it isn't always great. It leaves them quite hard. So we'll do that. And we've had Valentine's Day. Do you do Valentine's Day? We don't. Um... It's funny really because I, I share, my best friend's a florist and I often share her work um, through my social media and I'd shared some bits about Valentine's Day and Craig had put a message on, is this a hint? Which always makes me laugh, but no we don't um, and I don't, you know where you get one person who bothers and one who doesn't, neither of us do and we're fine about it because we're kind of in that relationship where we don't need a card because the day says oh you should send a card and, and red roses, um, I actually bought some daffodils um, because I love daffies, I'm not a yellow flower person but my mum loved daffodils and I always, if I was going home I always when the season was right I always took her a bunch of daffies so I have daffodils in my kitchen and they're sort of my sort of you know they're sort of mum to me um but so that was my valentine to myself but no we don't and Craig's very he's one of these where he'll surprise me um so you know, he's he won't want me to say he's romantic, but the last thing he'd want anybody to think. But he is romantic because he does it when it's not sort of contrived and forced. So I think that does make him quite romantic. But no, we don't bother. But equally, if you do, good for you. My friend sent me a picture of a card her husband had got her, which, which said, you'll do. And that's what Craig says to me, you'll do. So we were laughing. I said, well, at least you got a card. But yes, I think she was a little bit, <gasps> sort of, how rude. But I, it made me laugh. Um, but no, we don't. But do let me know. If you do, what do you do? Is it all the flowers and chocolates? And do you do it as a couple? Or, you know, is it, you know, whoever, one side of you does it and one doesn't? Um, 
or are you one of these that says it doesn't matter but secretly it does <laughs> you know i've got friends who who said before no it's fine and i thought oh oh he's in big trouble here <laughs> so do you say no it's fine when you mean actually no it's not fine right i'm gonna put a little bit i have got the charlotte tilbury uh pretty skin palette with um powder this pressed powder there are bronzers there are highlighters and there are blushes i'm just going to use the highlighter here i just used the bronzer from there this was a gift from my friend a very good friend right blushes i'm going to use the one i don't use very often <laughs> because i don't use it very often oh pretty that's nice i do love that foundation though you see a good base and the skincare i've really upped as well so that's helped massively um, I did put some La Roche Posay lip balm on because I'm going to put red on but I just want to soften the red down it's NARS it's one of their pencils Dragon Girl oh it needs sharpening <gasps> love sharpening pencils there I just want to I'm not going to apply it to the bottom I'm just going to wiggle the lips around a bit it's actually created its own lip line quite like that I'm just gonna soften it down with my finger there that's it I didn't want it to be too full-on red um I've got the elf perfect finish HD powder I'll use a little a touch Just over T T bone. There we go. That's my use up look for today. Hope you enjoyed that. I oh, quite like that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the chat as always. And I will be back with another video very very soon.